Are you ready for the unthinkable? The clock is ticking and the world is holding its breath. Political tensions are escalating, pandemics are spreading and natural disasters are intensifying. The writing is on the wall, the end could be near. Don't be caught off guard. The prepper movement is exploding with millions preparing for the worst. But is stockpiling supplies enough? Or are we neglecting the most crucial preparation of all? Our spiritual readiness. The Bible warns us to be prepared for the Lord's return, but are we too distracted by earthly concerns? The end times will be chaotic, like something out of a dystopian nightmare. Will you be ready? It's time to face the reality. Prepare your heart and soul and ask yourself, are you truly ready for the end? They are afraid that lack of food, extreme violence and hostile environmental conditions are going to make life extremely difficult, so they are trying to prepare. Some folks think that building bunkers, stocking up on food and ammunition, and even stockpiling Bibles and other religious materials is the wisest way to prepare for these catastrophic times. Many other folks may or may not be preppers, but they are consumed with worry or thoughts about the world's end. Many people, religious and irreligious alike, are confident that nuclear warfare is about to destroy everything. Others are convinced that global warming will bring about the end of the world sooner rather than later. Among Bible-believing peoples, some are convinced they are witnessing specific biblical prophecies playing out before their eyes and believe they can determine the end is nearby, comparing the Bible with the news channel. Pick your doomsday clock. There's likely an end of the world just around the corner for nearly every viewpoint. But if we turn out the noise for a bit and simply turn to God's word, we can find a good and right way to think about troubling times and even the end of the world. When we do this, we find that the world is going to end because God promises it. We also learn that we should be prepared for that end. But how we think about and prepare is very important. First, it's important and helpful to consider what Jesus said about the timing of the end. Many people worry and fret about when the end will come, or they try to pinpoint when Jesus will return. But listen to Jesus' words from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 39. Jesus states plainly that no one knows that day. What day is Jesus talking about? Earlier in the chapter, the disciples had asked him about the destruction of the temple he had foretold, and the signs of his coming and the end of the age. Much of Matthew 24 is devoted to the first question, but to answer their question about the end of the age, Jesus says, of that day, no one knows. Jesus has not given us a secret coded message to be able to figure out when he's coming back. He doesn't want us using all our time and energy trying to watch for signs that he is returning. But that doesn't mean he wants us to be unprepared. On the contrary, the fact that we don't know when Jesus is coming back means we should always be ready. In Matthew 24, verse 42, Jesus says, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Just because we do not know when the Lord will return and when the world will end doesn't mean we can't be ready. But the unknowable timing and manner of the Lord's return do change how we prepare. See, the Lord doesn't call us to prepare to survive catastrophic conditions. Jesus doesn't exhort us to stock up on provisions and build bunkers so that we can continue to eke out an existence in some apocalyptic landscape. The readiness Jesus calls us to is faithfulness. Whether the end of the world is millennia or days away, doesn't really matter to the Christian. Either way, we should be living faithfully to King Jesus. Either way, we should be ridding our lives of sin, growing in our faith, worshipping the Lord, and shining the light of his gospel to the world around us. Along these lines, we can adapt an attitude Paul once wrote about. When Paul wrote to the Philippians, he was imprisoned, 
and was unsure whether he would be released or executed. Both were possibilities. Instead of fretting about which would happen, he determined to honor Christ either way. He said, It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If Paul was about to die for his faith, then he would stay true and honor the Lord. If he was spared and lived longer, then he would stay true and continue working for the Lord. What a great outlook! If we have only days left until the Lord's return, then let's use those days to serve Him and tell others about Him. Or if His return is years, decades, or even further away, then let's use that time to grow and serve the Lord. Either way, let's serve King Jesus. If we'll do that, then we will always be prepared for His return. If you were to go home tonight and fall asleep, and in the middle of the night you were to be awakened to the sound of a trumpet, unlike any you had ever heard before, and in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture were to take place. Would you wake up traumatized and fearful, or would you wake up with joy and expectation, knowing that you were right with God, knowing that all of your accounts with God were paid in full? Many will be going about their day-to-day -day business. Some will be on the subway, heading home after work. Teenagers will be at the movies, getting ready to watch the latest Marvel film. Doctors and nurses will be clocking in as another group is clocking out. And then suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye, we who are alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Imagine it, two people working on their crops in the garden, plowing, weeding, planting, or harvesting. The sun is beating down against their sweaty brows, but conversation is sparse. Suddenly, one is gone with absolutely no forewarning, the other is left standing horrified as the tools drop unmanned to the dirt below. The one lonely farmer finally realizes that all those stories he had heard through the years were true. Now he is alone to await the terrifying events of the tribulation period. Now, perhaps, you might imagine two women working on gathering supplies to make their weekly allotment of bread. As the dusty floured dough is slapped onto the weathered board, needing it to produce the beautiful pre-baked loaf, one woman vanished into thin air as her clothes fall to the floor. Cutting through the cloud of flour floating in the air, the other woman can only stare in disbelief as her breath catches in her throat. Suddenly, the words of some distant conversation echo through the chambers of her mind. Please don't wait. You must be ready. You can't get ready, because the rapture will happen in the twinkling of an eye. Imagine the chaos on earth when this takes place. Imagine the news outlets reporting that millions have disappeared, seemingly vanished into thin air. Imagine the distress on the Christian man or woman who knew exactly what has just taken place, the horror on their faces as they come to the realization that they have been left behind. Yes, they heard about Jesus. They could recite the word of God, but they were not right with God. They lived a double life, a life where one foot was in the world and the other was in the church. They had one hand on the Bible and the other hand in the world. One pastor said that after the rapture, churches will be flooded with people who are distraught, people weeping and crying because they know what has happened. They know they have been left behind and they know what's coming. Now you may be wondering, what comes next after the rapture? Well, the Bible warns us of a time when the Antichrist will come to power and deceive the masses. People will be forced to take a mark on their hand or forehead in order to buy or sell anything. This mark will signify allegiance to the Antichrist, and those who refuse to take it will be unable to participate or function in society. Imagine a world where you cannot even buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk without the mark of the beast. Imagine being completely cut off 
from society and forced to live off the land just to survive. Furthermore, Christianity will be outlawed and believers will face persecution and even death for their faith. The pressure to bow down to the Antichrist will be intense. Families will be torn apart as loved ones choose to take the mark and turn away from God. Just listen to how the Bible describes the events of what will happen in that day and time. Revelation 13 verse 14 to 17 says, And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belonged to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast, who was fatally wounded, and then came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that anyone refusing to worship it must die. He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Picture a world where you cannot openly pray or worship God without fear of being caught and punished. Imagine having to hide your faith and your beliefs, not knowing who you can trust, in addition to this fact that everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, everyone will need a mark to buy and sell, meaning that there will be some sort of one-world currency controlled by the Antichrist. All financial transactions will be monitored and controlled, and those who refuse to conform will be unable to participate in society. This world will be one of darkness, fear, and despair. So, if you can hear my voice today, I encourage you to put Jesus first in your life. We must be diligent in studying the Word of God so that we can recognize the signs of the times and be prepared for what is to come. We must remain vigilant and watchful, testing everything against the truth of God's Word. In conclusion, the world after the rapture will be a dark and terrifying place. I don't know about you, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict me daily so that I may always be ready, waiting, watching, and anticipating the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. There should be an urgency in our lives. There should be an urgency in terms of how we live, because there is certainly an urgency in the Word of God about how soon Christ is to return. So, rather than waiting until the last minute, wouldn't it be better to be prepared now? Wouldn't it be better to be ready all the time? Wouldn't it be better to live in a constant state of preparation so we will never be caught off guard? This is what the Scripture asks of us and what Jesus commands us to do. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Please subscribe to my channel and share it with family and friends.